I'm going to show you two different strategies for showing and hiding objects in Captivate. If you are looking to uh, show one item while hiding several other items, this is the video for you. Okay, so I've got a couple of projects already uh, semi set up here. I'm using simple shapes to show you um, what I'm doing as a demo here. But if you wanted to, you could always change these shapes to be completely transparent and overlay them a, on an image. And then you could always just have the background change according to whatever you wanted to show and hide. There's lots of different ways to configure this. I'm just kind of giving you a, a really simple way to show you how to do this. So I've got a blue box, a green box, a yellow box, and I've got several slides already set up. I've got my landing slide here. Um, I just named it plain buttons for now. And then I've got a slide titled blue, one titled green, one titled yellow. What I want to happen is when the user clicks each of these, they're going to see a um, sort of a state change. It's going to have the effect of a state change. So let me show you first what I'm going to do. Um, let's see. First thing I want to do is link each of these buttons to the respective slide that's already there. I changed it. I already got use this button set. You'll jump to slide uh, blue when you click the blue button, jump to slide green when you click the green button, jump to slide yellow when you click the yellow button. Uh, something else I want to do is I wanted to make sure the inbuilt states are the way that I want them. I'm going to go ahead and delete the rollover and down states because it's going to ruin the effect that I'm going for. Let me just delete those. Delete and delete. Okay, and I'll exit the state view. So whenever you make something into a button, it automatically adds a hover and a down state. I don't want that because I want this to have sort of a seamless effect. So, okay, so those are a change. Now what I'm gonna do is select all three of these. I copied, I'm going to paste on to each of the succeeding slides. And then on the blue side, I'm adding text to blue. On the green side, I'm adding text to green. On the other side, I'm adding text to yellow. So the idea here is that I set up all these buttons and their states on one side and I can just copy and paste them to the other ones and make the edits that I need. You can see when you click on this and you go to actions, it still has the same um, on success set up here with infinite attempts. So let me show you uh, what this looks like. This is all set up and I'll show you the effect that I'm going for here. So when you click on that, it shows blue, green, yellow. Now. The user doesn't really know they're going to different slides if it wasn't for this player bar here. So I'm going to go ahead, go to Project Skin Editor. I'm going to disable the playback control, close that, preview entire project, and now you have the full effect of the states changing here. It feels like I'm showing one thing and then the other things are automatically hiding, but really it's actually three different slides, four different slides you're bouncing around to get that effect. But the user doesn't know that they're going to multiple slides here. And of course you can disable that click sound, kind of a silly thing. In the preview it shows the slides, but in the published version it wouldn't show the slides. So this is one way to get a show and a hide effect going for multiple objects, and you don't have to use advanced actions. That's the appeal of um, this method. Again, you do have to go to Skin Editor and disable the playback controls. So the user doesn't know that they are bouncing around. And again, you could always make these transparent and overlay them um, over an image. Uh, and you can use them that way to show information or to use them just as uh, buttons. The other way to um, have this set up is to use advanced actions. And I already set up the advanced actions in the background here. Let me delete that slide, I don't need that slide. All right, so let's do a quick preview of, let's see, let me make sure I'm on the right slide here. Oh, there we go, spacing out here. All right, state view, I've already got my states set up. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna use states to show the information rather than jumping around to different slides. So let's go ahead and preview from this slide. All right, so this is one slide. You get the same effect as the last example, except this is all on one slide and it's not bouncing around to different slides. I only had this slide up here so I could um, set everything up in advance and knew what it was going to look like. But this is a one slide option and this is using advanced actions. So one slide, 
Um, the item you want shows, and when you show that item, the other items hide. So how I did this was I made sure before I set up my advanced actions that I named each uh, shape. So I'm using shapes here. Again, you can format these however you want, make them invisible if you want to. And I went up here and I made sure that they had really clear names, blue state, green state, um, yellow state. I called these states because I was differentiating from my other project I was working on. And I also went into each object and set up a custom state. So I deleted the built-in hover and rollover down states, whatever. And I added a new state called custom. You can name it whatever you want. I named it active because I wanted to make it really clear when I set up my advanced action that this is the item that's going to be active when the advanced action is um, set correctly, okay? So I left the normal state and the active state is where the information appears. And you can, can set this up however you want to set this up. Now here's how I set up the advanced actions. It's a bit of a pain actually to set up three different actions because I have three different items. You can go crazy setting as many actions as you want to to show and hide things, but just um, make sure all your slides and your objects and your states are named in a really clear way to make it easy for yourself. So you can see I've already got my three actions set up. I named these actions pretty clearly as well. So if I want the blue text to show, I'm gonna activate this action. And all I did was uh, do a change state of under actions here. So blue state's gonna change to active when I want the blue text to show. And the green state's gonna change to normal, yellow state's gonna change to normal. Just to remind you, um, normal means blank. Normal is plain nothing showing, okay? And I basically just uh, went up here, you can use this button to duplicate the action and you can rename it to green text show, whatever makes sense to you. And then you just um, can change the, the states here, okay? So you don't have to rewrite the whole action because that's a huge pain. If you want the green text to show, you're just gonna change this to blue state to normal, green state to active, yellow state to normal, so on and so forth. Um, you do the same thing for the, the yellow text. And then for each shape, I've already got these set up as buttons, of course. The action is execute advanced action. For the blue button, I'm running blue text show. For the green button, I'm running green text show. The yellow button, I'm running yellow text show. Okay, so one slide using an advanced actions, no variables, so that's good. And it has the same effect as my previous example, just a little bit more complicated. We stay on one slide and as I click on each one, the other objects uh, change state. They, they basically hide the information. Um, there's more, there's multiple ways to get anything done in e-learning, I like to say. Um, there's never just one right way to get an effect done. You could also do this with showing and hiding. I, I tend to have less good luck with showing and hiding. I think states are a really good way to go. Um, states are, again, really customizable. And you can even change a state so that, you know, the default state is, it's actually, let me see. Um, you can make this invisible. I was gonna try to delete this from the state, it won't let me, but you can make this invisible by going to um, the, the options down here and changing the color so that is it's completely invisible. Oh, opacity right here. If you wanna change that to 0% opacity, then it's completely see-through. You'd have to you know edit your, your active state to make sure it was still 100% or whatever. You'll have to be, you'll have to fidget with um, all these options over here. Of course, Captivate is not an uh, easy program to use. Um, but again, you can make this what you want. You can insert um, further shapes. So this shape's only visible on active. That could be another way to put in more information. Um, in the normal state, you could have something that's like transparent off to the side as a button, and that'll show this item in the active state. There's a million different ways to make uh, the effect that you want. I hope this was a helpful video. This, um, both of these practice files, I've got links underneath the video if you want to download them and try them out. Thanks for watching.